<laughs> Greetings and welcome to the Badger Caves West Wing, where our stealthy polecats ferret out the best feels, funnies, and what the fuck to discuss slam bam badger style from the Badger Cave, 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 Cave. <laughs> That's me and Mike are from there anyway. Your sinuous hosts for this evening are myself, Supreme Derpy Doge in charge, our polecat punster Hannah, Dr. Randomer Cam Panda at large, Max Simpson's kin, not jaundiced, and our anchorilla, Scott. Uh, before we start by telling you about the following topics, I just wanted to give a shout out to uh, indie game developer Jennifer Daw, who made this piece of artwork for me. This is basically a um, lumpy baby doge thing in her style. So you, you might have thought, that looks familiar. Well, that's Jennifer's work. So she doge, she took the doge and her um, what she calls dumpy babies and made this this adorable and somewhat edible looking critter that you now see. I thought it looked like Kirby swallowed a doge. It's cute, yeah. don't get me wrong, but you know, you see what I see, right? See, I was yeah. thinking more along the lines that Kirby skinned a doge and is wearing its outfit now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's but, adorable. I'm still it is, that it's Halloween adorable. spirit right now, so I'm a little bit... I want to see Red guess. Dead meets Kirby. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this evening, we'll be covering the following topics. Attempts to ban Cassie J's film, The Red Pill, has failed in Australia. So what's the feminist response? Well, we'll double down, of course. Ban Cassie J herself. A potential new male birth control was recently being tested, but there are a few snags. We'll look into those as well. Comic artist Frank Cho gets a gift from fellow artist Milo Minara in the form of a spider toe, and Bill 6 C16, my pronouns. And finally, our bonus story for the patron-only after show. The Huffington Post reveals the incredibly sexist book once mysteriously billed as Trump's debut novel. Grab them by the bookie. <laughs> we'll be looking at that after the show. Anyway, if you want to listen to this topic or enjoy further personalized discussion with the Badgers on select topics, become a patron. www.patreon.com forward slash Honey Badger Radio. Now, we will start getting into the news. First, I will stop presenting this and go back to my normal so fluffy self. And uh, let's look at the first story. I think we're going to we're gonna wait on Bill C-16 because it's the biggest and save that one for last. So um, what do we got here? What do we got? So, so Scott, tell us a little bit about the banning of Cassie J from Australia. Or at least oh, my. Oh, my. Cassie J. Uh, <clears throat> the Red Pill, a documentary created by former feminist Cassie J, was, su was successfully banned from being screened at Palace Cinemas in Australia last week via a change.org petition created by one Susie Smith. As a result, a new venue has, soon, has since been procured to screen the film, but now another change.org petition is seeking to ban Cassie J herself from ever entering the continent nation. This new petition created by Rachel Woods states, as a way to fight back, we must go to the source and make sure the MRA filmmaker Cassie J is banned from Australia. Don't be fooled by her appearance and demeanor. She's a wolf in sheep's clothing and is the latest in the line of MRAs such as Julian Blanc and Rouge V, who have had their visas revoked by Peter Dunton, the ministry of uh, the Minister of Immigration. As per the usual, if you can't beat them, ban them. Can't right. even get the fucking MRAs right because those two aren't MRAs, right? <laughs> I don't know. No, 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 wait, no, no. I don't. I don't know about Julian Blanc. I... Yeah, I don't know about Julian Blanc. Rouge I don't know anything about him. Artist. Yeah, I was going to say, he's a pickup artist, didn't he? Yeah. yeah. Who? I, I know I've heard the name Julian Blanc before, but I'm drawing a blank, no pun intended. No, Julian Blanc is a <laughs> oh, pickup God. artist. Is, no. I can't Julian remember. Is a, here, if I may, Julian Blanc is a PUA as well. Okay, well, that's why. So, yeah. I don't know anything he's about him. there with uh, Rouge V, Neil Strauss, um, Aaron Von Markovic. And other there's a, dudes there's that a are person named Aaron Von Markovic, really? No, I swear to God, Aaron Von Markovic. I'm, he's a PUA. His name is Aaron Von Markovic. <laughs> he, he's, he is. He is. You know what they. You know what the, they call it. Uh, what is it? Um, that's that's uh, why I've heard the name before, though. Then somebody yeah. somebody probably tried to convince me that he was an MRA at some point. Yeah. Unless he made no, the news for something interesting. Yeah. <laughs> 
Well, it's a I, convenient I shutdown term. It's like, oh, they're an MRA. Oh, we don't have to listen to them then. Okay, good. It's just like, yeah, yeah it's, it's something easy to st yeah stop the conversation. It's like call somebody a, a rapist or an MRA, and there you go. There you you go. can't do it by calling them a pickup artist because that sounds like something that society needs. Oh, yeah, yeah some yeah. people need help to pick people up, but right? yeah. fact, nobody needs them. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Um, well, yeah. So, you, do you guys want to talk about this a little bit more um, in the in the discussion portion? Yeah. The Cassie oh, J banning. Of course. Yeah, okay. definitely. We'll come back to that. Uh, I'll do a quick reading of the Frank Cho story. Um, Frank Cho awarded Spider Woman original art by Milo Manara for standing up to comic art brown shirts. Our comic artist Frank Cho, known for drawing books and ladies in comics and for triggering comic book puritans with his Spider-Woman parody illustrations, held a panel at a recent convention about art and women. In the final 10 minutes of this panel, legend, uh, comics legend Milo Minara came on stage to give Frank Cho a gift for his fight against pearl-clutching SJWs and fainting couch regressive feminists, an original Spider-Woman illustration made by Minara himself, and far more triggering than the original Minara image that began this entire outrage tsunami, really. It seems that Cho and Minara aren't going to be caving into the feminist censors anytime soon. And I, for one, applaud that. Um, I, yes, and I will just briefly show you guys the, the gift that was given. Um, my dose of brain fall. Yeah, I know that something's wrong with the camera. Yeah, Fuck it. Sing the song. He'll be, I'll be fine. <laughs> All right. Let me show you guys the picture. This is what uh, Milo Minara awarded. Uh, I'll zoom out a tiny bit, but I think you guys get the picture. Yeah, uh, you might want to zoom out just in case we get flagged. Or oh something. shit! I'm way <laughs> in there now. Right now she's pregnant. Thanks a lot. <laughs> this is those, the picture. Those that pixels are pornographic. You have to get rid of the. You, know, you can't, can't, can't have that. Nope. <laughs> We've all been totally victimized by the pixels on the screen. I'm, I'm going to have to go to counseling now. I think the picture just winked at me. I'm not sure though. <laughs> <laughs> Here, I'll, I'm gonna uh, present to everyone so that the, there, I can see it. You can that see that she clearly has pink eyes. Already, she's already and brown eye. Everyone. Oh god! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this me, this makes apparently Spider Toe. Uh, this is Spider Toe, and it makes Tildeer happy. He is fapping in the comment section right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's because so. it does whatever spider toe Or is does. it just because we brought the citations? This, <laughs> this is the real deal. Uh, but yeah, no. So that's basically it. I mean, it's a small thing that I thought I'd point out, but I love it because it shows that, you know, despite the fact that this is getting worse and worse, like Jason Scott Campbell came under fire recently. Jeff Scott. Uh, Jason Scott Campbell. No, Jeff. Jeff Scott as Jeff well. Campbell. Jeff Scott Campbell. It, no, it's Are Jeff sure? Scott Campbell. Yes, I'm positive. Yes. Absolutely. I thought it was... All right, all right. But we're talking Jeff about Scott the Campbell. same guy who did, mm -hmm. like, Danger Girl and... Yeah, Danger Girl, 1013. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Jeff Scott right. Campbell. Yes. Okay, cool. So, yes. Yeah, so, he came under fire recently as well. And uh, this doesn't like it's going to let up anytime soon. So, yeah. But as long as people stand up to this shit, then, you know, this artistic freedom remains. Um, or at least for as long as, you know, they give them the finger. So... Good on you, Milo, and uh, good on you. Yeah, well, <laughs> get it, finger. give it the finger. I get it. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> you had to, you Max. I was going to let it go. But... <laughs> oh, let's... Let um, it go. <laughs> uh, yeah, and so good on you, uh, Milo Minara and Frank Cho, for you know, not giving in to these, these fucking assholes. Um, yeah, even Kukuryu had a, an, image, an image censored a while back. I, it was this is, oh, yeah. it, it's, she's a... A character that is supposedly is underage. I can't remember which I know, character. No, I know who it is. It's Kamala what, Khan. Yeah, no, and no, he no, grew her as an it's adult. The new, what, it's the new uh, Ms. Marvel Kamala Khan. Yes, but you gotta yes. Understand that there's another thing to that too. Uh, characters like Kamala Khan and like Spider Gwen and shit. They're like they're like feminist saints or something yeah. that they they're protected by them. Yeah, and yeah. They love them. You like if they did if you do this to like. If you make a sexy squirrel girl, they'll lose their shit. <laughs> well, what really blew my mind was that he he made uh, the image uh, as an image of an adult, and it and it actually said on the image this you know she oh, she's twenty one in this image, you know, and and they still called it pedophilia. 
So apparently, 21-year-old women are now children, according to feminists. And there's this, there's mm -hmm. this other really interesting aspect to it, too. They're fucking cartoons! Yeah, that's true. Oh. <laughs> they're, they're fucking not real. They're fictional characters. They don't uh. have ages. <laughs> they are not no, 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 no. See, the cartoon character will never be the same. She's totally traumatized <laughs> by this. <laughs> he aged her, like, what? Five years? Six years? How old I mean, was she before? Mm -hmm. No, she was, like, right. 16 or something. And you know, and 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 not to not to make complete light of it, I get it. You know, it's just like it's representative of a thing. But come on, people, it's it's not real. It's it's fantasy. Mm -hmm. It's 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 well. It's in that case, fiction. look, I, I, we, can, we case, can come back to. We yeah, have yeah. to remove all of the body shaped targets from from the police department target practice ranges because that's representative of a thing too. Yeah, and they mm -hmm. might be kids. You never know. Yeah. I mean, they're all blacked out. You can't tell who they are. Well, and then of course they're they're disabled because they they generally speaking don't have any legs. Right. And yeah. why are they all black? What's what's that, that say about racism? I mean, come on. Let's <laughs> how deep does the rat hole go? And they have no faces, <laughs> therefore they are probably also, you know, unable to see and can't speak for themselves. Oh God, the voices. Yeah. They're taking their voices matter. I mean, how nefarious is that? <laughs> and they're all black, which is racist. Yes. Um, but <laughs> let's move on. To, I think I could come back to this one a little bit because I want to make a mention uh, of going back to the the uh, Jeff Scott Campbell artist. <laughs> yes. But um, let's go on to the next story. Uh, Scott, I'll let you read this one. Um, okay. uh, it's entitled <laughs> Infertile Meatheads Incorporated. Meat. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, I just snorted. Excuse me. Um, uh, in a new male birth control study, 320 men were injected with testosterone and progesterone. Uh, although it was effective in lowering sperm count, negative side effects were high. News articles like CBS, <clears throat> excuse me, news outlets like CBS framed the study as closing the gender gap in contraceptives, but claim that pharmaceutical companies aren't throwing enough money at the new treatments, clearly because they don't care about equality and it has nothing to do with side effects. Birth control treatments simply cannot function the same in women as in men. While women re release one egg per month, men produce about 1,500 sperm per second. And, <clears throat> and where women have a natural fertility off switch in pregnancy, which female birth control mimics, men have no such uh, natural trigger to indicate it's ever time to stop producing sperm. The injections play into the, into the body's feedback loop as an indication testosterone is high and other hormones aren't released to stimulate sperm production. The side effects are the same as steroid injections, acne, mood changes, and weight gain. It is also not clear if the infertility effects are reversible long-term. The study found that injections were effective after 24 weeks with an efficacy stage of 56 weeks and about just as long to recover. However, the study was terminated early following the recommendation of external safety review committee. Okay. And there Why are some links. theories by Teal Deer coming on. <laughs> <laughs> Well, there is something, uh, Teal Deer is already commenting on. He says side effects were actually minimal. But um, there is some danger that in the long term, first of all, uh, this could have really adverse effects on men, uh, both mm, like, you know, emotionally and mentally and physically. In the same way that somebody who's basically addicted to steroids or uses a lot of steroids is. Secondly, you run the risk of, see, unlike, um, female birth control pills you can take, at least the way that the, the technology is now, you can take them and then stop taking them for a month if you wanna get pregnant or you know until you get pregnant. This, this current male birth control uh, that, that they're testing has the potential of you know seriously lowering your soldiers. So you may not actually be able to bounce back. So it's hard to say. Well, Same. do we want to talk about this now, or do we just want to do quick comments? Uh, I just, that was basically my quick comment. I don't know if anybody, if you guys want to come back to that. And I see the Tildeer is in the, in the chat saying stuff, but we can come back to this too. Yeah, I, I wanted yeah, to say something about it, though. I mean, I, it, it can wait unless we're just going to do it now. No, we can come back to it. That's fine. Okay. Hannah, do you, are you okay yeah, with I'll, that? Yeah, I'll have things to say with, when we come back to it too. Okay. All right, excellent. So we're going to go on to the last and biggest article that Max gave us. Uh, Max, go ahead. Let's talk about pronouns. Oh God. Okay. So guys, buckle your seat yourselves into your seats rather because this summary took me two pages, but there's a lot of important info that you gotta, you gotta put your reading glasses on, open your listening ears, 
you know what to do. So anyways, viewers of Honey Badger Radio should know who Professor Jordan Peterson is, right? He teaches at the University of Toronto, has come under fire recently for his refusal to use gender neutral pronouns. The instigation of the controversy surrounding Professor Peterson came from a YouTube video he made on his channel where he addresses a piece of legislation making its way into Canadian Parliament right now. The legislation, titled Bill C-16, seeks to, quote, amend the Canadian Human Rights Act to add gender identity and gender expression to the list of prohibited grounds of discrimination. That sounds all well and good, right? Until Professor Peterson decided to review the bill in his video. He noted that the law seems to legislate political correctness along with its protections for gender identity and expression. As stated before, this political correctness could create a battleground over the issue of pronouns, leading potentially to the arrest of nonconformists, including Professor Peterson. Well, arrest might be a little bit extreme, but uh, likely he would lose his job. When discussing, excuse me, when discussing the issue on an open panel called The Agenda with Steve Pakin, which is a new show up in Canada, named Kyle Kirkup decided to give his two cents on the matter. Kirkup is a law professor at the University of Ottawa with several credentials, so his take on the legislation should have some legitimacy, right? C-16 is a very basic document that is meant to protect gender identity and gender expression, and that bills like this are common in quote-unquote Canadian jurisprudence. He determines that the legislation says nothing specific in regards to pronouns and that the pronoun issue is a red herring. Apparently, the legislation tackles basic questions like are you required to undergo surgery in order to have an identity document that properly captures who you are as a person, discrimination by police, discrimination in the workplace, etc. However, when asked directly by the moderator what would happen if a trans person were to claim discrimination on the basis that their pronouns weren't being recognized, Kirkup said that he hasn't come across any cases in regards to that issue and that employers should still try to manipulate their language to keep the peace and try to encourage their employees to do the same thing as well. So nothing got solved, to put it in short terms. In contrast, Peterson has determined that the aims of the new law seem to be guided by resentment. Uh, that's his own word. He notes the wording of certain modifications within the bill. Some are vague enough where people could lose their job over the issue of pronouns. For example, modification of Section 2 of the Canadian Human Rights Act says the following. To the principle that all individuals should have an opportunity equal with other individuals to make for themselves the lives that they are able and wish to have and to have their needs accommodated consistent with their duties and obligations as members of society. Professor Peterson also notes that the abundance of quote unquote social justice warrior types uh, within the Ontario Provincial Parliament who are deliberating Bill C-16. Now he is right to assume that there are social justice warriors in the Canadian Parliament considering the existence of another bill titled Bill 28. Now this bill, in case you guys didn't know, seeks to remove the words mother and father from Ontario law and replace it with parent or birth parent, insert grown here. On top of this, he notes the wording that the Canadian Human Rights Tribunal uses for gender identity and expression, which seems to ignore how biological sex informs gender in favor of a proposition that you can be, quote, a woman, a man, both, neither, or anywhere along the gender spectrum. By his interpretation, Canadian Parliament might be embracing the notion that if your gender identity lines up with your biological sex in a traditional way, like it does for 90% of the population, that is a, quote, free-floating cultural construct. And he's right to believe that because, according to the Ontario Human Rights Commission, the code does not define the grounds of gender identity, gender expression, or sex. Instead, the understanding of these and other related terms and the implications for the code and OHRC policies is evolving from tribunal and court decisions. Social science research as well as self-identity and common everyday use. On top of this, the OHRC's definition for gender expression is as follows, quote, behavior and outward appearance such as dress, hair, makeup, body language, and voice. A person's chosen name and pronoun are also common ways of expressing gender. Now, despite the professional opinions given by Professor Peterson and Kyle Kirkup, the issue has not finished deliberation. Bill C-16 is still a matter of rigorous debate when all the aforementioned pieces of information are taken into account, as well as other pieces of information that were omitted from this summary for time. <sighs> Go. Well, thank God we can finally actually get through this story without mentioning Smuggly Puff and Count Fuckula over there. <laughs> that's, that's, that's been the only thing we can, talk, we can talk about for the past two weeks. So yeah, yeah. Let's, let's forget those two jokers and actually talk about the shit, shall we?
Does anybody have any thoughts on that? Uh, I honestly, the, the, the best thing to do if this passes, if this becomes a law, then, then Canadian MRAs need to start listing your gender as MRA and your pronouns as yes, you're right. And I agree. And, yeah. and people will have to say right. those things to you. <laughs> it is, it's it just, that's it. That and uh, I, know, I, I identify as a fucking asshole. My pronouns are here's a sandwich, here's a beer, and here's the remote. Using them involves performing the actions indicated. You're all sexist if you don't comply. You, you know what's funny, though, is that that's actually the best way to combat things like this, is yeah. to take it to the absolute extreme. Make sure that these, like, when it's like when somebody calls you out on it, that you you fucking use their own shit against them. You, you take this, you take this law, you take this rule, you take whatever it is and you just push it back in their face tenfold. And you're like, and then they're like, Oh my God, what have we done? It's like, we have to respect their pronouns too. This isn't what we wanted. You know, so fuck it. Yeah. Fuck it. Let it go through and let people have a field day with it. It'll be glorious because you know, once the internet gets a hold of it, they're going to fucking just go fucking bat shit with it. And it's going to be, fucking insane oh man i i love it i can't wait i hope it does because it just it just shows how fucking stupid this kind of stuff is it's, it's just this is glorious the potential for this is amazing i can't wait <laughs> yeah um although i don't paint my skin yellow in real life i might actually have to and start making people use my pronouns which are by the way for those of you who don't know homer bart and lisa i expect you to learn them right now and use them in perpetuity until the end of time <laughs> yeah yeah, this is a. Uh, I I'm I I don't envy you guys, but they've actually started doing this in the states too. And I think in New York, uh, University of New York, they have to acknowledge about thirty some odd genders and pronouns or something like that. And yeah, one actually, of them is gender bender. Yeah, I swear to God, probably. No, I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm not even. I, I buy it. I played a, a card game with the salt mine and um, and harmful opinions where you had it was a drinking game and you had to uh, guess the definition of a gender, a real gender from t well not real but a, a gender <laughs> right out of Tumblr, and there were over three hundred. So the fact that uh, you know New York would be like, well, three hundred's a lot, but these thirty one will take it, uh, and then there'd be some ridiculous shit in there. It doesn't surprise me at all. So. With Sims can one of them um I uh, there may have been a yeah I think there probably was a Springfield gender of some kind. okay <laughs> otherwise I was gonna flip my shit but anyways I, I know I know oh, okay so um, those are all the stories that we have so why don't we come back and uh, let's see if there's any that we want to sort of expand on more so coming back to the first one Cassie J getting banned from Australia well it just or they're, they're doing a petition it actually hasn't happened yet but Max what were you gonna say yeah no just out of curiosity were Bruce fee and Julian blank actually Australia? were they in Australia no were they banned from there because I, I thought some, it read that they were actually banned yeah I I understand that um, uh, they didn't want them there. Let's. I'll, I'll look into it while you guys uh, talk about some other stuff. Let me find out where Roosh has been. I'm going to go to. He has a Wikipedia page. No, wait. Wait. Does he have a Dramatica page? I'm pretty sure he probably does. Oh, of course no, he does. He, probably does. he has to. If there <laughs> is do you one, think that might be. Do you think that that might be better, a Dramatica page than a probably probably Wikipedia yeah. page? Dramatica you know, page okay. is better in every situation. Sorry. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. No doubt. Well, I was just going to say, this is Dramatica told us that everyone would be banned from every country. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Just don't read mine if there is one. Go ahead. No, oh, I just I just think this is hilarious. It's like in an age where we have an unprecedented amount of uh, you know communication options via the internet through through things like Periscope and YouTube live streaming and Twitch and you know any number of other avenues by which you can get information out. The idea of banning somebody from a country is. I, I can't even put into words how stupid that is. Like, <laughs> really, like, oh, well, you shut them down. Way to go there, tiger. You know, <laughs> you ban them from the country. Big deal. They can fucking live stream into your country to fucking even more people than they would be able to if they were actually there. You, you, this, this idea that 
stopping the messenger is going to stop the message. Even if it is something, you know, deplorable and retarded, fuck it. They have the right to fucking say it. If people want to listen, let them listen. Let them rise or fall by their own accord. The, the idea that you're going to ban somebody from a continent, I mean, it's just like, how many, like, hold up your hand and tell me how many you are, Australia. Jesus, you fucking grow up. God, what the fuck is, <laughs> what, what alternate universe did we split off into within the last, like, 10 years that this kind of shit happens? I mean, like, seriously, what the fuck is going on? I, I just, I don't even, I'm out of evens. You know, my sides, they are gone, as the kids they, say. You've had bad experiences with bullfrogs and rabbits, man. They can't tell the difference anymore. <laughs> I just, I don't, I don't, uh, uh. Um, I'm looking still. Uh... You know, I, I just, I just find this interesting because at this point, if it, there, there's no win here for Australia on this, because if they, if they don't, then they're going to piss off the feminists. But if they do ban a woman for being an anti-feminist, what they're basically mm -hmm. saying there is that you can't think for yourself if you're female. You have to mm -hmm. toe the feminist line, and if you don't, you can't come to Australia. But she's not even yeah, anti good. She's not even anti feminist. She's not even an MRA. She's just she pointed the camera on the MRAs and the feminists. And from what it I doesn't understand, matter. It doesn't matter because that's the reason they're banning her. It doesn't matter if it's correct or not. What matters is what they're doing. They're basically saying you have to have these opinions in order to come here. Right. And and they're literally the gatekeepers. Yeah. 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 Which which means they are telling you, they are telling all of the women in the world, if you want to be in Australia, you have to, if, if you're female and you want to be in Australia, you have to let these women here tell you how to woman correctly. Yeah. You, don't, you cannot be considered a proper woman if you do not women, woman the way these women want you to. That's, yeah. I mean, that's the, the, the fallout from this for Australia, right. is that they are essentially allowing a political group in the name of women, to do something to women, one in particular, but it will have implications for future female travelers to Australia, that is actually oppressive. Yeah, this is this is something on a more serious note, like kind of long. What you're saying, uh, Hannah, is that I I think when we when we see situations like this, uh, you know, we see stuff like this happen in Canada. Obviously, we see it in Australia. It, all across all across the globe, we're seeing these kind of things. And what this needs to be, honestly, it needs to be a, a political wake-up call to folks because there are people making these rules that are in positions of power. And if you don't like these things that are happening, you need to make a vie for that power. You need to get into those positions and you need to you know, bring back common sense, bring back a, a sense of you know, stability to your uh, political process because these the politics are being taken over and it's getting out of control. We're seeing fucking ridiculous shit like this happen. So this, this should very seriously, these kind of things need to be a wake up call that people really need to take politics and their political action more seriously. It's, it's, you know, it, it is so important because these things aren't, they, they affect everybody. And if you let them get out of control, there's no telling where they're going to end up. Like, I mean, <laughs> fucking the red pill getting banned from a continent, guess Jay getting banned from a continent. Um, you know, just all this crazy shit. You, you have to be more politically conscious and active is what this, you know, this tells me anyway. Yeah, Australia's got to have sort of like their Thomas Paine common sense moment. And what I will say, though, is that um, as far as I understand uh, the petition, it doesn't even have 100 signatures. Like even after Monday, Matt covered it yesterday. Uh, it wasn't even able to make that milestone. But having said that, if it's true that people like uh, Rouge V and uh, Julian Blanc were banned, even though I don't have a lot of sympathy for, um, it still sets a very dangerous precedent. And considering that, you know, if you look at uh, the United States, for example, uh, the majority of people that live there apparently don't identify as feminists, so you can't ban everybody. Um, so before s stuff become like takes an extreme turn like that people do have to sort of wake up and make uh, actual strides rather than just focus on um change.org petitions you got to email your mps and stuff like that yeah. and what did you say less than 100 people had signed it yet matt i mean Max? yeah i yeah i'm pretty sure last time i checked see here's here's the thing about that and like you said this this kind of thing sets a precedent sometimes yeah, with Scott, real quick, i looked at it it's like they're at 43 signatures 
Oh, are they? Okay. <laughs> well, well, here's the thing, though. You should never, like, never, never discount your opponent. Never, you know, never sell them short because that we we've seen, you know. <laughs> Over the last two and a half years, we've seen something that was fucking super, super tiny blow up into a fucking shit storm because yeah. there were a handful of people that wanted it to. Because you never know who those 43 signatures are from and what kind of power they have, what kind of positions they have to actually disseminate a, you know, a narrative and put it out there and really get people on board with it. So you should never ignore these kind of things. It's like, sure, it's 43 signatures, but what if, you know, 20 of those signatures are from people that work in uh, governmental positions, uh, you know, that have, you know, that have a lot of social reach and they can start putting it out on social media and turn, turn it into something that it's not. And then people start believing they're like, Oh wait, I saw this thing on the news. I saw this thing on TV. I saw this thing on the internet. I keep seeing this thing. So it must be true. You know, the, the people get that idea that there's more importance behind something, even if there's not really that much of a push because of who's pushing it. So you have to be careful about this stuff. You can't be complacent. You can't let this stuff kind of go by. Yeah, you absolutely yeah. have to do that, especially when you're Australian, because those guys like to ban everything. No offense, but it's true. <laughs> yeah, I, right. I actually I find this behavior very interesting from feminists because you look at how many how many countries do that? How many countries like ban somebody from coming into the country for having a political perspective that that doesn't involve you know where we, we want to kill people or we want to spread disease or we want to do this or we want to do that that's actually going to be measurably harmful? How many times? How many countries and what types of of uh, basis do they usually use for that? You know, are they going to put a a uh, what is it called? Uh, Fatwa. Uh, so are they gonna gonna you know put a death sentence on this on, on on Kathy J now somewhere in the world wherever she is some feminist somewhere is gonna try to assassinate her is that the next thing because it seems to be the direction that they're headed with this first they start declaring people apostates then they start saying well you can't come into this country because you think differently than we do and even though you're not advocating anything that, that's truly harmful or damaging or dangerous to anybody we don't want you to have the right to say it it, it seems to me that that's the next logical step i suppose they could call it a femtoi um <laughs> but, and, and you know what hannah though you're not you're not far off this is not this is not like a a, a super hyperbolic statement because you know we we have a very clear example of that in, in the united states with george tiller who was who was murdered because yeah. he was an abortion doctor because People kept going after him saying, you know, Tiller the baby killer, Tiller the baby killer. And then one fucking nutcase got it in his head that he's going to do the right thing and help out, you know, all the people. And he was going to be the righteous, you know, leading the righteous spear of destiny or whatever and fucking murdered the guy. So this is yeah. not outside the bounds of reasonable thought. This is not just a hyperbolic like, oh, we're taking it to the extreme. No, this this kind of thing happens. happens. And yeah, it's, it's not a precedent. It's because people were already advocating for his death. Yeah. I mean, exactly. it's one thing to criticize. And like, honestly, if, if that movie was something bad, the most important thing would be to talk about it. Right. You know, not not to keep it from being seen, yeah, not but make it to taboo. talk about why, you know, this is, this is, see this thing here right in front of your face that you can look at that this is what's wrong with it and this is why. And, and these are the arguments we have against it. That's what needs to be done with, with bad arguments. That's what always needs to be done with bad arguments, you know, and it, it's, it's, if, if it was a bad argument, feminists wouldn't stop it from from getting out there you know and i know that that, that we say that uh, a lot of things that p pickup artists say are bad arguments and everything um and they they did you know ban roosh from going to australia but they haven't kept his his work from being distributed all over the place there and the, the truth is um they're only going after him because they can then conveniently call him an nra and uh, mra and use him to go after us like i think if the, the men's rights movement didn't exist, they wouldn't give a rat's ass about Roosh. Oh, but uh, Muhammad is totally nothing like a feminist. And Islam is nothing like feminists. I have no idea where anyone would get that impression. What are you talking about, Randy McCam? Muhammad was totally a feminist. What are you talking about? <laughs> he, he, he had sex with a nine-year-old girl. <laughs> as far as we know, feminists don't yeah. give a shit about women, and they don't give a shit about men. They don't give a shit about anything but their ideology. They pretend to give a shit about the about the downtrodden and marginalized, but in practice, they will fuck them all over for the sake of extending the faith. 
Yeah, and perfect. Nothing like Islam at all. What, <laughs> I don't know why you're getting this. <laughs> I'm just not seeing the connection, Mike. I mean, you, could you clear it up a little bit, please? I mean... <laughs> Yeah, no, I, and you know what's also perfect is that another thing that feminists love to complain about, especially when it comes to women in, in just the worlds of Hollywood and filmmaking, there's very few women directors. And here's one that comes along and does not exactly what they want. Not She doesn't do what they want her to do. And they try to trash her and prevent her from letting her message out because she's a self free thinking person. Oh, they would never do that, Shailene Woodley. They would never do that, Kelly Cuoco. No, they would never yeah. do that. They would never do that, Max. That's just crazy talk. They would never shame people. Yeah. They would not defend the females. No, they would certainly not bully a single Beyonce woman into uh, <laughs> <laughs> calling herself a make. Not only calling herself a feminist, but making a spectacle of herself to do it. Right. Never. Yeah, the, the the problem is though when you when you do stuff like this, Australia, you make subjects taboo, and when things become taboo, people want them even more, and you're just you're creating a situation that doesn't need to be there. It's it's the Streisand effect. It's like, oh no, don't look at this thing, but I want to look at the thing now because you told me not to look at it. It's just like, oh. God. Well, and the thing is, if it was something toxic, the 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 Streisand effect gets combined with finding a shady spot, and there are shady spots everywhere. You find a shady spot, you 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 know stay out of the way. You talk about it anyway, and what happens is that's when you end up in an echo chamber, and when you put bad ideas into an echo chamber, they get bigger and worse. Yeah, those forty-three people turn into forty-three hundred, and then forty-three thousand, and then fucking so on and so forth. It's just like, uh, it's well, yeah. or if, like I said, if the movie were something bad, if. If what we were doing was something bad, the worst thing that they could do is is uh, make it so that the only place it could be discussed is in an echo chamber. Yeah. Make it make it so that it can't escape that because you know if you talk about it anywhere else, there will be consequences. Because as mm -hmm. soon as you do that, anything that that actually is toxic becomes more toxic it feeds on itself i mean look at what happens in radfem forums where they they start out talking about you know women are slaves and things are terrible for women and blah 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 and they end up talking about killing 90 percent of the male population and a large portion of the female population for not agreeing with them and and then you know hurting people basically is this you cannot put ideas in little boxes like that and keep people from from discussing them you you have to explore the idea look at whether it's good or bad look at what's right or wrong with it analyze it tear it apart and and you know see what it's made of and if it is made of something bad then you point that out you learn from it you certainly don't it, you know you don't cover it up well, you're talking about, mm -hmm. here's the problem though, when you're talking about feminism and, and, and ideologies like that, we're talking about, uh, we're talking about groups of people that don't want actual conversation is the issue. It's like they, they want right. capitulation. They want you to do what they say. It's That's because they're the ones with the bad ideas. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's like they're, they're yeah, not but, trying to expand the conversation and, and try to come to some consensus. They're telling you what to do. That is their goal. That is their main focus. So. Yeah. yeah, they don't want a light shined on this discussion. No, not at because all. Because it illuminates everything, you know. They just right. want to people to just trust that what they're saying is not something that's coming from a, a side or some yeah. kind of, you know, like a ideological point of view, but it's just their answer, their solution is just simply the the completely practical, pragmatic Common sense answer. Yeah, no, that's it. That they, they want it to be so sort of given that no one questions it. Right. Once you like, once you have an idea is just simply given, you don't question it. It's like they have no sense of consequence, or they've taken the idea of consequence and completely flipped it on its head. And as a very wise man once said, the consequences will never be the same. <laughs> <laughs> so so let's move on to male birth control. <laughs> Done goofed. <laughs> Done goofed. Oh. oh man. Oh, can can I jump in on this one real quick? Yeah, go ahead. Um, all right. This is uh, apparently this is a short study. 
uh, that they did for this thing, yeah. and they stopped the, sh the study short. Uh, here's here's part of the issue with this. When when we're talking about issues of biology and chemistry, when you start monkeying around with those things, there's always going to be consequences. We see this in the, um, uh, we see this with suicide rates with trans people who are on hormone therapy, uh, taking huge spikes. We see this, um, you know, and anytime you introduce uh, something that is meant to be a chemical deterrent to the way a body naturally functions, you're going to see bad side effects. I mean, even if it is just, you know, well, okay, uh, let me rephrase that. If, you know, even if it's just a, uh, oh God, a, a rise in suicide rates, it's like, I didn't mean to sound flippant when I said that. That's not what I meant. But, um, but what, what ah, sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Right. Yeah. Sorry. Um, Did yeah, you we, take this shot? Screw yeah, no, I, I, drank, I drank a Pepsi and I'm fucking, Some I'm geeking out on sugar right now. This may include, yeah, you it's just, find the words that you want to say because brain. Yes, exactly. Uh, let me, yeah. Basically though, something like this needs to be studied extensively. It's not something that you can just do, oh, we just did this little quick study and everything's fine. Everything's cool. It's like, you, you know, give it women or men. When you introduce these kind of, uh, these these situations where you're trying to curtail the way a body naturally works, there's going to be issues. So I don't know, just I'm all for it. If they can make it work, if they give it the, if they give it the right amount of time and they give it the right amount of research and, you know, take care of it. Because when you start talking about um, messing with chemistry, like I, personally, I have, I have, you know, massive chemical imbalances and you know, I'm manic depressive. I suffer from like real depression, like hardcore fucking, you know, the whole nine yards. And so I, I understand what it's like to have, you know, your your chemistry just go fucking haywire. And like, like so when I think about this happening to people who maybe aren't used to it or maybe haven't had to live with it or just doing it to, you know, for the for the purposes of uh, birth control, I, I think it can probably be kind of dangerous because it's dangerous for me as somebody who's 43 years old and has dealt with this my whole life and has not known a time when I haven't been suicidal to some degree because of chemical imbalances and such. So... Stuff like this, it, it it gives me pause because there's there's a lot of dangers here. There's a lot of dangers here. So it's just it's it's not something to be taken lightly, is what I'm getting at. So no, I, I hear that. Um, that that this is what, what I wanted to say is uh, the the male birth control uh, discussion has been going on for a long time, and it's not just a chemical or medical issue. That we're looking at which is why it's really important that we you know we get even though it's taking a while we also want to be really patient to make sure that it's done right because there are people you know maybe people are trying to rush it maybe people are you know putting something out without looking at the long-term effects um and but also we want to make sure that there aren't you know there aren't people that are doing this either for and against for um political reasons because i think that if uh, look at it this way if we get a male birth control pill that works well and has very few side effects, which at one point we almost did, I think there was a guy, um, I think he might have been South American or Central American uh, doctor who had you know, come really close to designing one. Um, it would change the way that I mean, we deal with all this stuff dealing with um, birth control and abortions and so on. It would have a profound effect on that. It'll have a profound effect on, on um, paternity rights and uh, you know, all kinds of stuff. I mean, you basically have just made it to where now men have a, a new option, you know, that's outside of something as extreme as vasectomy and something as uh, unsafe or sort of you know, uh, risky as trusting your partners taking the pill or using a condom. Oh, you know, and as less uh, impractical as what is often recommended, which is simply to be remain celibate. Uh, you know, so this will really have give it'll give men a choice, a, a much more profound one. So when I heard that they were doing it and I looked at it, I was excited at first because I think, oh man, you know, we gotta. I want there to be a, ma a male birth control option that is, uh, you know, that is valid and useful to men and maybe affordable and all this. But then I saw the way they were going about it and it made me wonder, like, this doesn't sound good because it's, it's messing with male testosterone levels. It's messing with, you know, stuff that, um, and, and 
granted, you know, if the female birth control pill was having a lot of weird effects with, with their makeup, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm for, you know, that discussion still going on too, because I, I think that once you get into that, you, you, you know, it could be risky. So, and, um, yeah, when I heard it was supposed to lower the, the, the sperm counts, like to a drastic level, I thought two things went through my head. One was, um, can you get them back? Is this going to be like, you know, a really long-term thing? Cause if you're a guy and you want to have kids, you know, there's, we, we have a lot of medical problems, especially in, um, you know, later in life for men, depending on their diets and exercise levels and stuff where they could, you know, lose their soldiers or even just something that they inherit. Um, so there's that. And then there's the other, the other side of it is, you know, what if you, uh, you know, you can get them back, but you got to wait like an extended period before you build it back up. I don't know, you know? So it was some questions worth asking, but I think Hannah or, or Scott, you're waiting to get in there. So, um, yeah, well I am, if, if Scott wants to go first, he can. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, okay. I pretty much said what I was going to. Okay. Well, I got, I got a couple of things to say here. You know, there, for one thing, there is a, a history in medicine of, um, so pharma pharmaceutical companies and, and inventors of medicine uh, jumping the gun and with disastrous results. Probably the most famous one, or at least the one that was most famous to my generation was uh, thalidomide. And that caused severe birth defects. And it wasn't, it, if I remember right, it hit the, the generation just before mine. It hit the, the flower kids. But, um, and then the, the, probably the second most famous one is, in my generation is drug interactions like FinFin, uh, which if I remember right, that one caused heart attacks in young people. Uh, you know, so this is something that has to be taken very seriously when they start talking about this, about side effects. And it, side effects can be very rare with medicines and still be something that you have to pay careful attention to. It may be, um, it may be something where most people can take it, but there's a percentage of the population that have certain conditions that can't. And I'm like, you've probably, if you live in the United States and you've ever watched a television commercial that advertises a medication, like half the commercial tells about the medication. And then the other half is this guy talking on fast forward, telling you all of the people who shouldn't take this medication and contact your doctor if the following things happen. And of course, one of them is that you're supposed to contact your doctor if you die, which, you know, if, if, if I were a doctor and somebody died and then they contacted me, I would not want to, <laughs> and that would be it for me. I'd be like, I'm out of medicine. <laughs> You're on your own. But, um, but seriously, and I like, this is a big thing for me because I, I've dealt with some very nasty side effects from the medications that I was on growing up. And I've talked about this before. Um, and it, it, like it, it, I almost lost my mind on, on steroids for asthma. And some of the other medications they had me on interacted badly with those. And we don't know if it was naturally occurring, if it was because of the medications, if it's from something else that I, I went through medically. But uh, can I throw this uh, Whoa. Brian. Oh, I'm sorry. Am I too loud? Oh, my God. Um, yeah. Can you hear me, sorry. Brian? Yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you. Okay. Okay. Uh, I, I just wanted to tell you what uh, some of the side effects of this could be. When you artificially increase someone's testosterone levels, you can, uh, that, what happens because your body um, stops producing as much because it's like, oh, we have lots of testosterone, we're good, like we don't need to do that, you know. Your balls start to shrink and that's actually why your um, sperm count goes down. And there's a chance that if you do this too much, and this is basically because essentially what they're doing is they're giving you steroids. Well, and what's happening. there's some, and, there's another thing. Um, there's been some discussion and there's the first study that was always cited on this turned out to be um, not really good to cite. It, the, the sample was one guy and it was the methodology was very bad. But there's been other studies since that, that indicate that having your testosterone level abnormally high can have implications for your heart. Oh yeah, it, st it stresses out your heart. Yeah, for sure. You know, and then see, like that's the thing that I was gonna say. With me, it wasn't um, it wasn't hormone steroids. It was other steroids. Uh, uh, but that's what happened with me. I have an irregular heartbeat now, and um, they've determined that it's not dangerous. I'm not gonna like conk out on you guys in the middle of the show. But 
but yeah, um, medications can, you have to be very careful with stuff like that. Medications uh, are, are not something that you can just treat lightly and we can't rush something like this. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to say on this though, the other thing that I wanted to remind people is this, if this doesn't for some reason work out, it's not the only choice. Um, we've covered uh, vasal gel, I think I'm pronouncing it right, vasal gel before, and they're making progress. Um, the company that that is studying this, it's called uh, Parsi the Parsimus Foundation, they are making progress with this. In fact, in August, they recently, uh, they, they saw that they could see it in a, in a dog vas deferens on high resolution ultrasound. So it is, they, they can confirm that when they put it where they want it to be, it's there and it stays there. So that's, that's a good thing. They're actually showing that it, uh, that it, that it works. So they're getting closer and closer to human clinical trials. Um, so there, this is something that, you know, that may happen before there's a shot. Like, I mean, this is going to be a shot too, but that may happen before there's a hormone shot. So it's, you know, it's not, don't lose hope if this turns out to be a, a long game or turns out to, to just not be a possible possibility. Yeah, I think this is going to be, I think it's possible, but I do think that it's going to be a long game. And it's not just going to be a medical one, it's going to be a political one. There's going to be de definitely some political interest coming out once the male, if there is some reliable uh, form of male birth control, uh, yeah, that's 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 really going to be a, there's going to be a shift right there. Yeah, I hope. Sorry. No, go ahead. Go ahead, Max. Max. No, I was just going to say very quickly. Hopefully, that if it does get seriously political, that uh, well, that men collectively don't do the same thing as some women did when Aggie was uh, in serious consideration, where we all just cried out sexism because of uh, them not providing this, because for all the reasons that you guys have been saying, this is an absolutely terrifying thing that we could be dealing with, especially when it comes to uh, something that's so integral to everyday existence, like our sexual reproduction. Um, and especially for me, because I'm sensitive to all the side effects. I take um, medications. Uh, I've taken many throughout my life, and they've altered my uh, physiological and psychological makeup. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. Scott, were you gonna say oh, something? I was, I was just gonna say it's like, and when something like this will come up, it's like you know somebody be like, "You got me pregnant." It's like, no, can't. Sorry, it wasn't me. It, you know, it was. Uh, I, I know, right? M Mori I, Povich I will show what Mori <laughs> Povich will go out of business. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's <laughs> <laughs> right. Shaggy defense oh would gosh. be a legitimate thing now. It wasn't me. <laughs> wasn't me. You know, though, if this does become political, feminism is going to eat itself over this because half of feminists are um, are already on board with the idea that this will take the pressure off of women. It's like one of the big complaints that feminists make when, um, like, when you start talking about paternal surrender, one of the big complaints that feminists feminists make is that every form of birth control that women can use has has a price, basically, and not just a financial one. And, and there's to a degree that's true. Like I've been on birth control pills. It, it's not necessarily great. Um, I've I've had the shot. It's not necessarily always great either. Although to be honest, um, it didn't hit me all that hard. And I, I I have seen it hit other women harder. It does have side effects. The the, the hormonal stuff that that is used for women has side effects. And you can be sensitive to. Um, to spermicide, you can be sensitive to latex, you can be, so all the different things that uh, that women can use, you know, that's that's one of their complaints. So there are feminists out there that are like, yeah, we, we want to see a, a male pill, we want to see a male shot, we, you know, not, there are feminists that want to see male shot for other reasons, but Ew. there there are feminists that want to see male birth control. And then there are other feminists that are like, no, this is this is our domain. They're going to take it away from us. They're they're going to take the decision, the control away from us. So I, you know, I, I think if this um, does become political, even though I generally don't like working with feminists, I think that it would be very strategic and wise for the men's rights movement to foster the pro birth control birth control attitude in the po pro male birth control end of feminism. Because frankly, in that fight, 
every ally we can get is going to be helpful. All right, I think I'm I'm getting a request to bring Tildir on to explain more about this thing. So I'm going to ask him. Um, <sighs> Allison, if you're listening, and I know you are because I see you're trolling the chat, <laughs> um, send him a link and he can pop on real quick. Meanwhile, uh, we'll quickly go on to the other story. I, okay, I want to talk really briefly about the Frank Cho thing. There was something that came to mind that I was thinking about. And we'll come back to male birth control for sure. And then we'll do, we'll do C16 and see what Tildur thinks about that. I'm sure he'll say it's idiotic. Um, okay, so real quick. So the, a lot of the shit that I noticed, when it, what it comes down to is every time a comic artist makes artwork and feminists get upset, they try to find, a, they, first off, they start from the conclusion of, I don't like this. I don't like this. I don't know why yet, but I'm going to figure it out. And then they like find a way to construct something that suggests why they don't like it. For example, wasn't there like a... Um, that that anime. Do you know about the, you know about that anime? I can't remember the name of it. Where girls use they fight with their butts. It's like um, they they oh, bump the, each yeah, other. Yeah, it just came out recently, stuff. wasn't it? Yeah, it's like yeah, yeah I can't I remember what it's called. called some, but yeah, it's an anime name. It, it's a single word name that starts with K, and I know people in the chat know it. But anyway, yeah. there was an article that some feminist wrote that said that you know if you like this, you're not only you know a sexist, but you're a oh. pedophile because yeah, the girls are on Beach Street. Yeah, yeah. And it was because the girls were, I guess, under 18, even though the age of consent in Japan is like 12 or something. Um, but that's none the, that's, that doesn't matter, right? But there was that. It's called Keijo. Thank you, um, Conspiracy. And, you know, it, it, it's, it makes you think, like, how are you coming to this conclusion about people that, like, that might like this? Well, you have to start from the, the you don't like it, you don't know why, and then you have to build – you know, like start, it's like you build the railroad to figure out how you get to that conclusion after you have it. Another one is um, a Riri Williams with the one that uh, Scott Campbell did, the, the, the cover for, was like the Iron Man or whatever. And as this girl in this pose, and it's just, his artwork all looks basically the same. You know, he just, th that's just the way he's always drawn. If you hire a guy like him, to draw your female character, you're going to get a sexy image in his style in the same way that if you hire Milo Minara, the, the, who's known for erotica, you're going to get a certain look. If you hire Frank Cho to draw a woman, you're going to get a certain look, right? And then they were saying, well, you can't do that because she's only 14 and, you know, and all this weird shit. And the one thing that I, that I started thinking about was one of the oldest comics that's been around, or at least for a really long time, and you see it in grocery stores across the country, and it's probably the most like innocent and and just sort of milk toast, dullest comics there is are the Archie comics, and the Archie comics have have been drawn by a pinup artist, and you know he draws them fully developed people, especially the women, right? So, but no one has a problem with that, and we've had this for decades and decades and decades. What the fuck is up with these people? And I'm just when I just thought of Archie Comics when I thought of that. I was like, well, nobody has a problem with that. Was it like Bernie you know, Parent? it was Bernie Parent, wasn't it? Mm, I can't remember the guy's name, but he the the artist, one of the artists for Archie Comics. <clears throat> he was actually he also did pinup work for Playboy and stuff, like just like drawings and cartoons. Right. You know, pretty. I mean, but again, even then, like by the standards that he was making, the pinup work that he did was really innocent as well by like today's standards. Like if you go, you know, you can't compare, excuse me, the stuff he did to like a, a suicide girls photo shoot or something, right. you know, so. Well, I mean, you look, at, you look at artists across the board as far as comic artists go, um, even Bruce Tim started off doing, and he still does. I mean, he does a series of books called Naughty and Nice mm -hmm. while he's doing, you know, the kids safe stuff that we see that we know from, you know, like the Batman animated series and all that kind of stuff. He also has another, Part of his artwork he is a fully realized artist you know he does a, a, a broad spectrum of stuff just like frank cho just like minara just like bernie parent just like many many other artists they you know because these people they take you know they take commissions from you know their fans and sometimes fans want you know certain things i mean granted not all artists do this but it's not outside the bounds of reason and you know but if you look at classical artists, you look at Michelangelo, you look at classical sculptors, there are naked people. My God, all oh, the horror. It's so crazy, you know, that people would take inspiration from actual life 
and draw people as they are or can be. So th the whole idea of this thing is just kind of crazy. I mean, it's like you don't see the, you don't see feminists going to the Louvre and picketing because there's a woman with an exposed breast or a statue of a child with their genitals exposed. I mean, it just doesn't happen. But for some reason, comics is, has become this fucking battleground where a feminist, you know, like Lindy West and all these other schmucks when they're fucking hack writers and hack artists are, you know, trying to turn this into like, oh, these, you know, these damn dirty nerds and their, their creepy fucking fetishism and this, that, and the other. It's just like, get fucked. You know, this is art. Art is, you know, Frank Cho is great. Menard is great. Frank Cho does beautiful works of art. And then just to, just to call back to something we, we did a while back when we uh, were doing the, the breakdown of the video where they're like, you know, women can't even get into these poses. And it's, it's it's funny because oh my god yeah remember we did that um, but it was funny because the girls, those BuzzFeed women the can't get into those poses those yeah, women like, can't yeah those but I've women seen women get into poses. those poses and yeah. more poses absolutely it's, it's look up Mia Malkova there you go um, but it's funny though it's because right they now. it's like they uh, <laughs> please do um, they like you said they they know they they know they have to be offended and it's like in that case they were so offended that they made a video about what they couldn't do and it's like yeah I'm sorry darling you can't do it because you're, like you're a hundred pounds overweight you're not flexible and you you know you're not you're not this idealized version this fictional version which is not it's not always fictional but you know what I'm saying it's like you are not this person that's why you cannot do it. You know, it's ah, it's fucking crazy. They just they, they will they will lose no opportunity to be offended about anything. You know what? At, at the at the height of her fame, at the when she you know faced the greatest controversy and had progress, congressional hearings targeting her and everything. Today's thin-skinned, special snowflake social justice types would have absolutely crucified Betty Page. And she's an icon. She is a feminist body positivity icon today. She is a she's an icon to feminists for for sexual freedom. She's an icon to feminists for for uh, you know being being as a woman, being able being free to to control what you do with your body. She's an icon for all kinds of things like that because she she didn't uh, follow the standards of the day. She enjoyed herself. And she celebrated her her physical being. She celebrated her, you know, she celebrated sex. She had a great time, and she didn't hurt anyone. And it, the the movie came out. You know, the local art house theater played that. They played uh, the suffragette movie. You know, recently and everything. It's it's clearly a more social justice minded type theater. But had they been around during the controversy, had they been uh, there at the time that people were coming down on her for being too free for their taste, these people that are that are bitching about this stuff, they would have just they would have joined in with the the pitchforks and torches crowd. They wouldn't have been defending her. They wouldn't have been body positive. They wouldn't have been uh, you know forward thinking in, in terms of sex they wouldn't have been all about sexual freedom they'd have been going you know this this hurts women this is terrible how dare you that's that's where we are today you know um, and and they would have basically acted like she was a victim of something when she had complete say over what she did or did not do and that's that's where we are today we've gotten to the point where like the the feminists of my generation and the feminists of my mother's generation they celebrated that kind of thing they they felt like that was that was the height of of freedom to be able to just do what you want to do and not have some law against it that that says no you can't be you can't be naked in front of other people who who you're not married to you know no you can't you can't have pictures for crying out loud of of completely innocuous things like there's one scene in the movie where she's being photographed dancing with a doll you know? and I mean it wasn't even that for somebody that might have been sexual but it wasn't overtly sexual and that actually that would piss them off today you know that's that's it just blows my mind to see that it's just like we were talking about uh, before the show in chat where just a few years ago on reddit there was a shit storm because of somebody mentioning um, mentioning uh, 
male circumcision, they called it male genital mutilation, and feminists swarmed the post to bitch that they were comparing it to female genital mutilation, and they were all on about how evil and terrible that was, and it's the worst thing that ever happened to women and everything. Now there are feminists, because they want to support Islam, and because it is in uh, Islamic nations that this is still practiced, and not necessarily all, all of it, but um, they're they're approving it. There are feminists that are coming out and saying, well, you know, if it's a religious thing, it should be allowed. Where, like, my my generation, the, the feminists that were in my generation have to be looking at these girls saying this and just shitting themselves, going, what the fuck are you thinking? I, it just, it blows my mind that we've gotten to this point, but that's where we are now. And how do we get to this place, though? How do we get to a place where body, potty, body, body, <laughs> body positivity turned into hmm. like this thing where, yeah. <laughs> oh, God, I'm sorry. Water sports. Uh, <laughs> hey. Oh, my God. No. <laughs> um, but how did, like, literally, how do we get to the point where these, where these, you know, noble ideas were like, hey, you know what? We deserve freedom. We deserve body positivity. How did this turn into this puritanical, uh, you know, ideology? Like, what, like, what well, the fuck happened? Like, seriously, what happened? You remember what I said about putting ideas into an echo chamber, putting bad well, ideas into an echo chamber? We have, we have yeah. the progressive stack. We yeah. have the, the social justice ideology of, of, you know, you have to obey the progressive stack. You have to live by the progressive stack. And then you put that into a safe space where nobody is allowed to criticize and contradict. And everything that, that, has to be okay and nobody can actually come out and say you know that's actually stupid um and and that's what you get you get these this this tangent they go on this tangent this is where we're going with this and and, and every little step of the way somebody says something just a little bit more ridiculous and stupid until yeah. all of a sudden they're <laughs> approving things that the previous generation of feminists were against and and they're they're freaking out over the ability to have the thing that, that, that the previous generation of feminists fought so hard to make possible. And I mean, you know, not that, not that this stuff would not have eventually come about without feminism, and not that I'm saying that feminism was necessary, but it's just funny to watch it eating itself like this. This is feminism getting its tail in its mouth and chewing away until it gets closer and closer to its head. Yeah. <clears throat> I can't begin to add sadness that Camille Polly must be feeling over this particular issue because, you know, that's what a lot of her life was centered around and just to see it regress in this way closer to the end of her lifetime, unfortunately. It, it is something that I don't want to contemplate because even that just depresses me, you know? Yeah. No, I, I, I understand. And actually, um, media representation was a big thing for Camille, uh, is a big thing for Camille Paglia too. So, um, Camille, you're still around. You should keep writing and, and doing interviews and stuff. And if you want, I'd, I'd love to have you on HBR. Actually, I've always wanted to talk to her. So, uh, about stuff like this, I'd be curious about that a lot. So anyway, um, the, that's that's all I wanted to say about the the the, the Frank Cho thing. I, I think that it's um, it's ridiculous, and, and you guys have all covered it way better than I could have anyway. Um, but but we are we're yeah. This is uh, it's pretty cool that people are fighting back, and I think people are starting to get sick of it. So we'll see where it goes. It's one of those you know things where eventually an ideology oversteps itself, and then people really push back hard. And I think that's we're, we're getting to that point, you know. Yeah, I think it's becoming saturated at this point because you you have a lot of crossover between comics and movies and uh, video games. So the same people that live within those you know sub sub fandoms are seeing this thing happen to their fandom. Even you know metal, it's like we're seeing you know again. There's a lot of crossover there between those four things, and people are like, "What the fuck? They're going after everything that I love." It's like everything. It's it, and so people are fighting back finally. 
at least I hope they are anyway. They're kind of mm-hmm. like, it's, it's getting saturated though, for sure. Yeah, I mean, you, one has to ask yourself, maybe the folks in Japan said, how do we trigger everybody in America? I know, we'll have a show about girls that fight with their tits and asses. And we'll take it really seriously. Yeah. Now, I'm mean, so, you know, like this could be like that, that their whole plan, just like a lot of other th- projects they've done. I mean, as soon as, not that anybody didn't see this coming, but the moment VR became somewhat mainstream, Illusion started, well, we're gonna make a porn, you know, like the first thing that we're gonna make a hentai game. So, yeah. I, you know, they don't, they don't give a shit as long as the market is there and it, it will be, you know, they're just that, that stuff's gonna happen. So, quick question um, What was that the name of the thing where they're fighting with their tits in their ass? Uh, you Kaijo? know what? I don't remember. It's in the uh, uh it's, it's Kajo with a whole bunch of exclamation points after it. It's got oh. a, it, in fact, it, the I guess the uh, English translation is hip whip girl. Um, <laughs> okay. this is um, a- Alex Tinsley wrote about this. Uh, it's it's on the honey badger blog and it's it's titled breaking the narrative episode 18 all right kotaku it's your turn smack the hip of babylon and it's that's that's uh that's the name of the article but uh you know he he had a a good rundown of this and he went through and actually the the idea of uh triggering people on purpose he's actually addressed that in this article that it it may have been a, a good marketing tactic because if you get people triggered over something and and saying you know bad things about it and everything people will watch it just to see if it's true they want to go see the train wreck so mm-hmm. that is a good way to actually bring as long as you uh, have produced a quality product that they're going to come back for after they they come to see it and they just hey this is good you know um Make then get people yeah interested. and that's right sorry, sorry just one other thing and did you say that when the japanese write this they actually take it really seriously well, they, they, I mean, they're clearly having fun with it, but the, like the dialogue, that's part of its appeal is the fact that like this ridiculous thing is happening, but the characters oh. are reacting in a serious way. Okay. You know? I, I was just going like, to say, like, it's basically like a martial arts fight, you know, but well, it's basically sumo wrestling boobs and, boobs and titties. Yeah. Right. I was just going to say, can you imagine if they wrote it like the hunger games? <laughs> oh, I love that. <laughs> Super serious. <laughs> It's like that, a volunteer's see, tribute. No. <clears throat> yeah. Now you see that that's a really good example of how do you how to piss off feminists in 0.25 seconds. You take the, one of the things that they worship, which is the Hunger Games, and then you, yep. you just make it all about tits and ass. And then you make it serious anyway. Yeah, that would just, they would flip their shit. Somebody <laughs> out there has already done it, I'm sure. Like there's a porn version of it somewhere, of the Hunger Games, you know? And it, has, um, yeah, it exists. Yeah, the Hunger Games, you don't even have to change the name. It's just like, it's already there. Yeah, you don't even have to change the name, right? <laughs> Come on. Let's get real close. <laughs> All right. Well, anyway, let's go on to B. Is it is it B16? or Bill C16. The, Bill C16. Thank you. Thank you. And um, I don't know. Like, uh, the, Max, do you have any other thoughts about that? Like, the, the okay, so, uh, well, yeah, no, go ahead. Do you have any other thoughts on that? Yeah, I was just going to say, I, I believe the thing that's the most shocking about that, for those of you who didn't watch the uh, interview with Mr. Peterson on the agenda with Steve Pakin, you can probably go watch the highlights of that on Sargon of Akkad's channel. He actually did a video on it called uh, A Hero of Free Speech. Uh, during that interview, they, like I said, the guy's name was Kyle Kirkup, uh, who was uh, a lawyer, a, a professor of law at the University of Ottawa. The fact that he decided to sort of dodge the question uh, right out the bat where the whole point of the talk was to see if uh, things would get to a point where not calling somebody by their preferred pronouns would be criminalized. It's like, well, Bill C-16 is just very basic. You know, it's something that we've been doing forever in Canada. And then when the moderator said, uh, yeah, but what if this happened where somebody tried to claim discrimination because you they weren't using their preferred pronouns. He's like, well, they should they should just try and do it anyways, where they should just try and manipulate their language. I, I can't, I, God bless Professor Peterson. If you ever watch uh, the stuff where he actually has been interviewed, the man is a stone cold face, hard ass. Honestly, I would be scared as hell to ever play poker with him. Oh just, no, that I, dude I, is the I, shit. Man. He's the shit. And just the, the imagining just the kind of rage that must have been going through his mind during that interview where he was just because he refuses to change his uh, parlance 
I would have lost my shit uh, on the guy that he was talking to, the guy who said there's no such thing as biological sex. But uh, yeah, that's that was just my main takeaway. Does anybody else want to talk? <laughs> Somebody actually said that, Max. There's no such yeah, thing yeah, as no. biological <laughs> sex. Yeah, there's a uh, okay uh, on that interview. Uh, one of the people that they had on was a professor of trans studies, no joke, at the University oh. of Toronto. And no joke, the first sentence that he said was, um, "I don't believe there is such a thing as uh, biological sex." And he said it at exact same tone. That's the yeah, guy. Yeah, he sounds like yeah. Mister. <laughs> you know what? If if oh my God. if they decide that there is no such thing as biological sex, that eliminates trans everything there you go. because the yeah. definition of being transgender is when your gender doesn't match your biological sex if there is no biological sex then you can't be trans this is what happens when we turn away from the lord's light that's all i can <laughs> say <laughs> <laughs> By God, you mean the singer, right? <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> no, oh. that's the South Park version, though, right? I'm just saying, we could be royals, Scott. <laughs> we could be royals. Oh, don't misgender me, Max. God damn it. <laughs> Sorry, His Majesty. Thank you. <laughs> now, um, I haven't, I haven't actually seen it, but uh, some of the guys over from A Voice for Men, I noticed in a in a chat, were saying that Blair White has a good video on this. So, every oh, sure. when 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 this is over, everybody go rushing to to Blair White's channel, and the video is, I think, titled "There Are Only Two Genders." It might, oh, there are only two genders. Get the fuck over it. Yeah, I think the right fuck is two asterisks in the middle. So. So it's get the F asterisk asterisk over it, probably because of YouTube's new censorship and shit. But yeah, it, it looks interesting and I've been wanting to see it. And and I know that uh, she's, she's been spot on with so many other things. So I wanted to point that out as well. Yeah, she explains it quite also well. Also in that panel discussion that Max was referring to, uh, Theron Meyer was there, even though in the, yeah. the Sargon version, he he doesn't um, include her part of the discussion. And she shares a lot of the same views that Blair explains uh, in, in her video as well. So sorry to talk over you, Max, but you can have it back now. Yeah, no, no, Here's sorry. I was, just, I, I was just going to say what you were going to say was that Theron Meyer was on the panel and oh. was sort of <laughs> providing that perspective that I imagine uh, Miss White was doing. Yeah. Are you open to learning? <laughs> you remember that yes. guy? That's just yeah. he said that too. Yeah, I would have um, said, "Are you?" He, yeah. No, do you know Jordan uh, Peterson? He kept his cool really well throughout the whole thing. Just, I would have lost. I mean, I, I don't know, man. Those people were infuriating, and um, but uh, you know, he is really drawing attention to something that I think is. It may not appear to be serious now because, like, the way, when you look at the panel discussion about the bill, they the people that are for it, the people who are you know want to acknowledge the the gender spectrum and you know have all the pronouns be respected and stuff, their defense is it's is it really a big deal to just peep just call people by their appropriate pronouns? That's their that's their only defense, and Jordan Peterson's defense is. It's actually much more important and a, and a much larger issue, which is why are we taking things as truth when we have no evidence that they are truth? And then we're applying the law, the, 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 the force of law for people to acknowledge this as a truth, even though we don't know, we have no evidence that this is a truth. It's in, in his mind, it's made up. It's completely made up. And Theron and um, Blair and others have made you know good strong cases for it but the only defense on the other side is can you just do it it because you know it's killing people when you don't people are dying you know which is not true i mean that's bullshit but yeah it, and it's so insulting just to <laughs> predicate the idea that a trans person's continuation of their life rests on whether or not you refer to them by a particular word you know at least that's my opinion Go ahead. It, we've, we've talked about uh, something like this before, and I um, and I, I made a statement on this before, and I I'm gonna stand by that. I've watched people be stronger on this issue 
you know, of, of, of just having the right to be themselves when themselves is not common. When whatever it is about themselves, whether they're whether they're trans, whether they have uh, an interest that everybody else doesn't have, that's you know that makes them unusual, whether they're eccentric in some way or another, you know that that their being themselves doesn't hurt anybody, but it's it's way out there as, as far as everybody else's experience and what everybody else um, wants to do and wants to be, and probably some of the strongest people I've known are people who have had to fight to just be themselves because they're trans. And I think this really minimizes that. This is like, this is kind of spitting in the face of that strength. It, it makes it this, this idea that misgendering somebody whose, whose pronouns you haven't even told yet, especially, is, is going to kill them. I mean, there are people that have been actually beaten to death for being trans. You know, there are people that have been uh, there that have been murdered in in various ways for being trans, and it's there's a very stark difference between calling someone he when he wants to you know when she wants to be called a she, or or having a new term and you don't know it yet or you're not used to using it yet and you screw up. There's a very stark difference between that and taking a baseball bat to somebody's head, and the idea that 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 gets treated the same is it really is spinning in the face of the person who has faced that baseball bat and faced that crowd of angry people saying you can't be yourself because we don't like you we don't we don't agree you know and it that's just disgusting as far as i'm concerned and that they're teaching people to be that weak and helpless and easily triggered, and easily kicked down, easily knocked down, is is absolutely shameful. They're taking away something that has been a defining characteristic of, of people who are transgendered, people who have different sexualities, people who have different interests and, and hobbies that everybody else is like, well, I think that's boring. Why do you even take an interest in that? Anything that has set people apart in a way that other people don't necessarily understand. And it, it's just, I, it, it really pisses me off to see that. You know, that's, that's the first thing. The other thing is the, well, can you just do it? It's, it, it's not that bad to just call people, well, that's not what this is about. That's deflection. This is about whether or not you're getting penalized for, for not doing something that somebody else wants you to do. It doesn't matter whether it's that big of a deal or not to do it. It doesn't matter whether complying doesn't take a lot of effort. It doesn't matter whether complying doesn't take anything from you. It matters if somebody comes along and says failure to comply is going to result in a fine that you can't afford or jail time or loss of your job or some other penalty. That matters. And that is what this law is about. You know, it would be great to, to uh, see people come together to, to learn more about this. You know, it would be, it'd be great to see people come together and say, okay, well, how can we form a community around this? How can we be, be friends with each other? How can we work together on this without having somebody come along and say, well, we have to have a law to make you work with, with our group and our way of doing it, especially when social justice warriors among the trans population are doing the same thing to trans women and trans men that feminists do to women where they speak over everybody who doesn't fall into line and agree with them and they treat them like shit and they actually tell people yeah we represent those guys when they don't and that that that's what this is about it's not about whether or not it's a big deal to comply it's about whether or not it's a big deal to be penalized and to be spoken over and, and to be, you know, treated to all kinds of hell if you fail to comply. Yeah. Well said. Um, yeah. And it's all, it's all about control with them. And, um, and there's an enabling that happens at the institutional level with like schools and stuff when they say, yeah, you should be addressed by your pronouns. You are special. And 
therefore, you know, this is we we should probably pass some some rules and and you know, like like uh, Mr. Peterson's job is not in danger. I don't think well because he's under tenure, but he may he may suffer fines. Um, and because he said he's not going to back down, right? So he may suffer fines, which could lead to uh, incarcerations or or other penalties because he said he won't pay them. Well, um, and, actually, uh, I, I am I wrong about that? I'm sorry. Um, no, ahead, I, on his Twitter, I'm just uh, trying to bring up his Twitter right now. He did say something about teaching next year and whether or not there'll be possibility. It's just my <laughs> internet is working against me. Um, That's all right. Just give me like two seconds. No, no, it's cool, it's cool. Well, okay. while it's coming up, I want to point out one thing. Even if his job was not on the line, other people's jobs are. Yeah. Well, Absolutely. Some... People who aren't okay. tenure. Yeah, okay, so he said... Too, if I can really fast... Just yeah. quick, is that basically what we're looking at here is we're looking at government-mandated human interaction. Basically, the government is telling you how to interact with other human beings. At the, at the very most base level of what this is saying is... The government is trying to tell you how to behave. This is a fucking, you know, I hate to I hate to invoke this, but it's fucking nanny state is what this is. This is fucking oh god, this is just too much. It's too fucking much. Yeah. Okay, so sorry um, for that uh, little wait there. Um, Peterson said on his Twitter about three hours ago saying he doubts he'll be teaching at U of T in 2017, refusing to use G as in the made up pronoun. G with the Z H E is illegal. If university administration does not sanction me, they too break the law. It's the law under the Ontario Human Rights Code. Employers are liable for employee speech. My hate crime is therefore U of T's hate crime. So, oh, oh, that's another that. bad thing. Then, I yeah. mean, on top of the the control issue where they're facing a penalty themselves that places a, a, a employers in jeopardy. So you could have some employer that has, you know, like a thousand employees and one person gets accused of failing to use somebody's pronoun. And it could even be a situation where somebody hasn't told them their pronoun. Cause basically by the way, this is written, um, it if somebody makes up their own pronouns. You have to, you know, like that nobody else is using. You, you'd have to use that pronoun for them. And if you're a new person on the job, like some factories do this thing where they don't, they don't hire, most factories don't hire like off the street. You can't fill out an application, at least in the US, you can't fill out a, an application for most factories. You have to find the uh, temp agency that they hire through and you get a job with that temp agency. And if you're lucky, the temp agency sends you to that factory and you work there for three months or so, and after you get through your your ninety day period of of them watching you to make sure you're not going to be a dumb shit on the job, um, then they hire you. And they could have somebody on day ninety one, you know, who's who runs into somebody that they haven't run into before in that factory, and doesn't use the right pronoun, and all of a sudden that that person whose whose pronoun wasn't used now has the capacity to sue the factory into oblivion and and there go those thousand jobs and that product yeah well i guess there's not much else we can say about this topic unless somebody else had something else um i'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up i think we, we're like at 5 30 on the money oh so, uh People, yeah. email Peterson. Uh, I believe his email is jordan.peterson at utoronto.ca and tell him to come on Honey Badger Radio. Yeah, ask him to come on. No, seriously, I'd love to have him on. Uh, that would be awesome. We could talk about uh, what, what he thinks about the MRM, but also we could talk about his, his – uh, he made a very, very good explanation on what a, where social justice warriors come from in another discussion he had with Lauren Southern – but he also put together a very simple one where, you know, how you how to create um, a social justice warrior by, uh, you know, spinning this narrative about uh, press classes and uh, oppressor classes. So, yeah, I'd, I'd like to talk to him about that. 
it, one more thing real quick. I just want to point sure. out somebody in the, somebody in the comments, Tom Burner uh, brought up the idea that saying my, my pronoun is nigger and you're legally required to call me this. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> like this is what I'm talking about. Like if they're going to yeah. make these laws, take them to the extreme and make them fucking eat their fucking own shit, basically. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. oh, Absolutely. Dude, this, that's brilliant. See, I mean, it's like... Because well, they're that gonna was be, actually, they're going to be doubly offended by. See, that. this is how I know that we have we have the best subscribers. Because I was gonna, that was my next thing was going to be, for you guys in the comment section to tell us what your pronouns are, oh. um, and everyone come up with their own best pronouns. So pronouns mine, is, is mine is Master of the Universe. Um, Amen. Yeah. No, ha Master of the Universe. Oh, okay. <laughs> Well, I told you mine. You have to make me a sandwich, get me a beer, and hand me the remote every time you want to talk to me from now on. <laughs> <laughs> or anytime you want to talk about me. You still have to come find me and give me those things. There you go. She's not lying. She's got drones. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, tell us, tell us what your pronouns are. Maybe it can't be pronounced. Maybe it's like the, you know... Like it's pi or something. Like you, and, and not just pi, but you have to actually say the numbers. You know. Like um, are you sure? <laughs> are you sure it's not like, you know, apple pie? No, no, it's three point one four, and then everything else. You have to say the whole thing. Yep. Every time. <laughs> the, wait, wait. We did you say the whole thing? There yes. is no whole thing. <laughs> you can't say the whole thing. It doesn't end. <laughs> and there it lies the brilliance of that. There you go. Okay. Anyway, um, yeah. So tell us what your pronouns are. Tell us what you think about. Uh, well, we, you know, we all know that Cassie J is probably not going to get. There's not going to be enough signatures to keep her out of the country. But tell us what you think about the fact that the most dangerous country or continent, rather, on the entire planet, is still with with probably some of the hardiest people apparently still can't handle a woman that has her own ideas um, going well, let's, there. Let's so. not throw the entire country under the bus. No, no, I won't, just, I won't just do that. Feminists, yeah, won't do feminists, that. feminists just in feminists. Australia. Yep. Feminists Same. in Australia are more yep. afraid of Cassie J than they are the Huntsman Spider. Same, man. Come on, my Australian, my Australian brethren, fucking stand up for yourselves. Have a say. Fucking, don't yeah. let these shitheads fucking take over your country like this. This is terrible. I know. It's, it's, it's actually it kind of hilarious. <laughs> and uh, tell us what you thought about the spider toe that uh, Milo Minara made for um, for uh, our guy our guy Cho. And then uh, lastly, uh, what what do you think about the male birth control pill? Do you think or, or not pill? It's really a shot right now. I, I think Tildier had a lot of stuff to say. He did he did say one thing. He said, "Let me drop a hint about this latest male birth control that was ninety five percent effective with an average of twenty percent adverse effects." And a 90 percent of which were mild. It was funded by the World Health Organization, but it was shut down. And so he's like, "Does that? What does that tell you?" So maybe there's something else to look into. It maybe Teal Deer would make a video on this where he goes deeper. Um, but yeah, just give us your guys' thoughts or what you know about our stories, and we look forward to seeing them. Uh, I, thanks I, I again. Think, I think we what? must always say, "Go deeper" when talking about birth control. Always go deeper. And I, I have I have something to show. Is that okay? Oh yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Um, it's a, a red pill showing, uh, and this is going to be on December eighth. It's a Thursday because Tug doesn't do weekends uh, in uh, Upper Darby, Pennsylvania. And uh, right now, sixty eight tickets are still needed to uh, to get this. It's the pinned tweet on on my Twitter profile right now. Um, if you, you click on it, I've retweeted myself. If you click on that, you can, you can get to the tweet where I have the link to the, the, uh, promotion, the tug promotion for that. And I am planning on going to this, um, but Mad Cat is the one that's hosting it. So I just wanted to, to point that out. So go to it, either Mad Cat's profile. He's, um, at GG underscore, I got that wrong. GG Mad underscore cat. If I were typing it, I'd have it right. Uh, and his his profile should have that on there as well. And we'll be tweeting about that, both of us, um, further down through the month too. But uh, like I said, it needs 68 more tickets to sell for the event to be on. And I hope they do because I am planning on going. 
Yes, try to get tickets for that uh, showing of the Red Pill. We want to show this in as, as many places as possible. So if you're in the Pennsylvania area or, you know, willing to make the trip, then yeah, go for it. It should, it'll be a good time, and Hannah will be there, and Mad Cat will be there. Uh, all right, I guess that's it. If uh, I guess uh, I want to thank my co-hosts, Mike and Scott and Max and Hannah, and I want to thank the chat for being the chat, the best chat, and Tildeer for poking his head in, and as well as Allison for giving me shit while I'm trying to run this shit as best I can under the circumstances, um, and the patrons for keeping this show alive. I don't know why you guys do it, <laughs> but I appreciate it. So um, I guess that's it, and we'll talk to you guys on the next Polecat cast or sooner.